you don't have a book out, do you? I have a book being written right now. Okay. Right now, I don't have one out, but I got somebody working on one right now as we speak. Okay, work. Give you a little bit of background on myself. My name is Marquette Devon Burton. Go by the Saint in the Center on YouTube. I uh, ended up in the YouTube game, I spread what I call this ism. And one of the reasons I reached out to you is because black folks, we all know a lot of people that done some time, but people got a story, but they can't tell the story. You can tell the story. I think that you have a, a really bright future ahead of you. I think you have a purpose. It's very clear. And I want to be a part of that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I appreciate that, man. I'm definitely uh, looking for new avenues, man, and, you know, how to build this thing. Because um, everything I've done, man, I've done, you know, from, from, from the ground up, man, from the mud, me and my son, you know. I just make the videos, man. He does the uh, technical part, like editing and yeah. thumbnails and all of that, right? That part of the game, I'm still learning myself. But, you know, I just sit down and, and just speak, you know, authentic, authentically from um, from what I've experienced, you know, the things that I've been over, you know, been through in my life. So it's easy for me to just sit down there and recant the story. I actually... Um, was surprised the other day, man, when he was telling me, man, I got over 600 videos. And, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got over 600 videos in two years, man. So I've been grinding. I, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm a uh, on hands learner, man. You know, and so I remember when I first started, he was like, um, I was like looking at another dude. I was like checking, you know, other dudes that had about the same amount of subscribers as I was just to see what I should be doing and shouldn't be doing, you know, as far as like, you know, numbers and whatnot. And um, I was like, man, how this dude doing this and doing that or making this and making that? He was like, well, he posts every day, you know what I'm saying? He said right. he posts every, every, like, you know, I was posting like three times a week. Right. From that day on, I posted every day, you know what I'm saying? I post every day, you know, and um, I seen everything change and start moving forward. So that's just like really the remedy to what I be doing, you know what I'm saying? Once I know the, the, the how. Then I, I, I moved forward with the how, man. And um, I just been blessed, man. I met a lot of good people, man, you know what I'm saying, in this journey already. You know, a lot of good people, man. You know, that's how I probably end up getting on No Jumper. And uh, I was on No Jumper and Vlad TV in, in less than 10 month period. I was on both of those. So, you know, I've met NFL players, man, Hall of Famers, um, Hasbro Trophy winners. Uh, people have reached out to me, you know, because my story resonates with them. And my message is, is plain and simple, man. It's like, there's one thing I say through all, all my videos, man. I say, be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. I believe those three things right there will determine how your life turn out, you know. And um, I be just wanting the, the, the young fellas to know, the young kings and the queens to know, man. You can make one mistake, man. Listen to uh, one person take one piece of bad advice, man. And uh, it, it could be decades when you're trying to recorrect that, right. you know what I'm you know, um, that's 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 real, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I was young. I, I, I fashioned myself as a leader, but in, this, in, in looking back, I was more so like a follower because I was easily influenced. And that's what I be trying to let these young cats know. You can look at somebody, and, and, and from the optics, they look like they got more than you, and they know more than you. But in actuality, they probably don't. And you get to follow in that lead, and you ended up you end up in a place, man, that you can't get yourself out of. You know, and I think a lot of young cats, man, they believe that, you know, it, it, it's their experience. You know, when you're young, every, every time you get in trouble, man, either your mom, your pops, your grandmother, somebody gets you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. So you have this false sense of belief that, you know, whatever I get into, then, you know what I'm saying, I can get out of or they'll get me out of. But it's not like that with the system. You know what I'm saying? You can cross that line and do something that, you, you know, can't nobody help you. Can't nobody uh -huh. get you out of it. You know what I'm saying? And I be trying to let them know that, you know, this, this, and I let them know what prison is like, you know, and out of my 600 videos, man, I, 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 I keep it positive, you know what I'm saying? I, I tell the raw, but I, I keep the, the certain details and the cuss words and the profanity out of it. It ain't a cuss word or N word on my whole platform, you know what I'm saying? And I do that purposely, you know, because I don't feel like I got to do that to get my point across. You know, I be just trying to let them know, man, your life is precious, man. Freedom is, is everything, man. And time is the most valuable commodity that you have, you know what I'm saying? And when you locked up, you giving away uh, time, man, and you don't even know what you got left. So it's like people spend their time 
more cautiously than uh, I mean, people spend their money more cautiously than they spend their time. You know, and that's to me, it's just crazy when you take a good look at it because you, you know, uh, money can't buy you time, but you know, in time you can make all the money you want. Right. So those are the type of things that I be trying to push out, man. And um, yeah, man, I just want to get on bigger stages, bigger platforms. I want, you know, what I'm saying, be able to spread this message, man. I believe it's a movement. You know, to change the mindsets of the young people, man, so they can, um, you know, I, I believe if you if you if you know where you're going, then you you know you just need somebody to, to show you how to get there, man. And I just think a lot of a lot of these people out here, man, they committing these crimes, they doing these things, they joining these gangs, they you know they shooting, they they going by what is being put out there as an example to them, and but nobody is telling them what the real consequences is. Right. Nobody is telling them, man, look, that, you, know, you can be gone for 30 years, 25 years, 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is telling them that. They don't believe that. They don't understand that. And I know it sounds crazy because you know when you're doing something wrong, there is consequences. But they really don't know what the consequences was, just as I did. Even though when I was doing what I was doing back in the day, I didn't know that. Okay, well, boom, this I could be gone for 30, 40 years. Nah, I had no idea of that. I think that that is powerful information that needs to be you know, forced into these young people here, man, so they can understand that this, this is what you face. Yeah. So you tell me what's worth that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I right. just can't see it. You know, if somebody would have told me these things, I try to speak in words and in a way that I think that it resonate with them with, and which I thought would have resonated with me when I was young. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody would say, man, you know you run around with this gun, you know, you rob people, you know you're going to be gone for about 30, 40 years. Man, I'd have buried the gun. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I was probably like it was a hot potato, but I, that's, that's things that I didn't understand. I couldn't process that at that age. You know what I'm saying? Because you haven't even lived that long, so right. how could you process being gone that long? You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 uh, it's information, man. And I always say, like I say, misinformed people, man. They, they misinform people. Huh. So, you know, we got to give them the proper information, man. So that that's the path that I'm on, man. And, and I was just like you, man. I stumbled into this YouTube thing. I, I, I you know, I came out here, I had a couple of trades, you know, and uh, I've been in the boxing all my life. And, you know, my end goal was to get out here, you know, and, you know, build up some money and uh, get me a gym, open up a gym and get some young kids and teach them how to box. But, you know, with my own rules, you know, you can, you can, you can be in this and you can get this lifelong lesson, but you don't have to take these life lessons as well. You know, you got to be getting good grades. You got to be not in no gang. You can't be out there running the streets. You got to be doing good in school. And in turn, I'm going to give you some man, that you can take with you for a lifetime. So, you know, that that was my end goal, you know what I'm saying? But I came out here, did an interview with a dude, man, and um, the Jones just kept getting good numbers. And he was paying me, and I kept going over there doing the interviews. And then my son just said, man, hey, do your own. Um, right. Do your own YouTube, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I don't know I do no YouTube, bro. And he was like, you just do it. You got the material. You got the stories, you know. So just tell them, and I'll I help you with the rest. And from that point on, we've been rolling ever since, man, two, two and a half years with this thing. Yeah, he damn sure had you smarting up early because I see cats like Lil Boosie going Vlad 30, 40 times. And I'm like, bro, what, what are yeah. you thinking? <laughs> you heard yeah, me yeah. Like, like, man, come on, man. You should know better than that. You're like you yeah, one of Vlad's yeah. favorite guests, one of the audience's favorite guests. You should have your own. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, he said, like, "Get your own, man. Do your own thing." You know, and all, uh, and and, and all. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a keep it real, dude. Though, man, I was telling the dude even when I did it right. It was a dude that he started that prison genre YouTube. He, he he's in the forefront of it. Is he like in the top three who started that genre? But it's a white guy down here, man. And um, he got this show called After Prison Show, and um. He actually got like 1.3 million some subscribers. So, mm -hmm. but his whole his whole platform was just finding dudes like me who actually did a lot of time. He did like six years, and having us tell our story. And mm. he just he had the machine, right? You know, and so you know, but he just kept having conflict with everybody that he was um, having on this platform before it was all over with. And um, I probably the only one he ain't really have a serious problem with. And um. You know, now that, you know, all of the people that stopped going on his show, you know, he still got the numbers, but he ain't got the show no more, you know what I'm saying? Because he, he don't, he was finding the people, and that's what my son was telling me. He was like, 
you know, you, you, you know, you got your own story. Tell your own story. Put your own message out there. Put your own information out there, and you know, get paid for your own information. So, I just been trying to build on that, man. You know what I'm saying? Since I've been out here, you know, that's what I've been doing. You know, day one. So to see right. you come out doing thirty, and figure this out in general, but in particular so quickly. I think, number one, that says a lot about you and your seriousness and your hustle, your consistency. And then number three, it, it, it got to be something God-given. I couldn't even believe myself. I'm not so up. So all I got to do is just tell stuff that I already know in my brain and just, just, just speak it out. And then, you know, I can make a living off of that. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's something that I can do. You know what I'm saying? I can do that every day because when you, when you did, I did 33 years straight. You know what I'm saying? I went in in 87, I came out in 2020. I came out doing it, and you know what somebody had asked me to tell me when I came out, I said, man, you picked the wrong time to come out. I said, man, you tripping. I'd have came out in the bubonic plague. Yeah, you know, I yeah. Then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're talking about the wrong time. That's how you know they ain't time. did no time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, I'd have came out here, they had mass war going on. Huh. I mean, that's how bad I wanted to get up out there. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I. And, and that's a picture I painted my, in all of my stories, man. And I tell these stories so people can understand prison is horrible. You know mm. what I'm saying? It's, it's just horrible. It ain't no other way around it. You know what I'm saying? One of the things that I said on Vlad TV, man, that um, he ended up asking Freeway Ricky Ross about that same topic. And they had a whole clip with that, too. As I said, in 33 years, man, I've never had a good day in prison. You know what I'm saying? Never had a good day. It never resonated with Vlad. So Vlad asked Freeway Ricky Ross about it, which I actually did an interview with Freeway Ricky Ross about 10 months ago, but he he, he must ain't remember when he was asked that question. Yeah. But um, it's on my platform, actually. It was a good conversation I had with him. But um, yeah, he said that he did because he said he was illiterate when he went in and he learned to read and he got trades and he put a he put a, a game plan together for when he came out or what he was gonna do. He visualized and what, you know, I did all of that besides the fact that I wanted literally when I went in. You know what I'm saying? I had family visits. I seen my mom, I seen my kids, I seen my grandkids grow up. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, <laughs> I locked up in a cell. Right. At the end of the day, I had to do what somebody was telling me to do. At the end of the day, I was in there with under these conditions. So. Overall, in totality, I never had a good day because whatever happened during the day might have been good things, but in totality, the, the day was ruined because I, I was out my freedom. People right. above all want to be entertained. They want to laugh. Yeah. They also want to learn some of what you got and what you have is, is great mindset and with your coaching that you're going to be doing, you have positivity is one of your big things and then grit grit the ability to persist under harsh circumstances a lot of people are so damn weak they think they're under harsh circumstances and they ain't yeah. but regardless yeah. Yeah. you yeah. can teach them how to get through that you know in prison you watch a lot of tv okay and i actually used to watch this show called the bachelor and the bachelorette this brother was on the bachelorette and um and i seen him and i watched him that whole episode man and um he, he was a lawyer out of miami a young black lawyer out of miami when he was in law school then and I actually get out and start doing my YouTube, doing my YouTube, and he reach out to me. Now he's a lawyer, and he's he's been watching my shows, and it resonated with him because he had a you know a tough past in his past, and he yeah. turned it all around. And it resonated with him, man. And then I reached out to him, and I found, I mean, I know you, I know you. I'm I'm watching him in prison now. I'm out of prison, and he watching me. It was just so surreal, man. And right. Flew me flew me to Miami, man. We got cool. He out there killing it, damn man. So. He a real, he a real good dude, man. Real good dude. Thirty three years old, man. He went in multi million dollar lawsuits. He done won about three or four million dollar lawsuits in the past year. So he killing him, man. You know, about thirty four years old. So yeah, man. So that was my first time in Miami. Okay, and uh, yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna have a lot of conversations just in general, cause um, and, and number one as of now in terms of links, websites we can promote for you is just the YouTube. Yeah, well, no, I got the YouTube, but you know, I got a couple of channels now. I started, I got a, uh, I had a cooking channel because when I first started with the dude, my cooking, the cooking, the way I cook in prison, like I cooked all my own food, man. They, them, them views got a lot more than my regular views. Wow. So then when I started telling the story, I had to separate it because when I tell the story, then I do a cooking zone, then they was crying about the stories, and the cooking zone was crying about the cooking, so I separated <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the cooking zone, though, now is, it, 
the, the stories have captured them, so they listen to the stories more. See, on my cooking, I got a cooking page called Pure Deliciousness, and um, it only has like 7,000-some subscribers, and I haven't even been posting on there for a long time. And then I just started a, a workout channel, Banky Pound Prison Fitness. That's just been up for about a month now. And um, and I and I just started a podcast with another dude that was locked up with me. He did 26 years, man. We started a podcast, and uh, we haven't really dropped any videos yet, but we right. put the page up so we can get the thousand subscribers and get the watch hours. Yeah. But, man, when we start dropping, it's going to be special, man, because we, we down here in Virginia, man, in Tidewater, we you know, the dude know a lot of people. And I've met a lot of people, but we got some big names or we'd have interviewed already. Like, you know, the rapper Pusha T, we'd have interviewed him already. He barely okay. even gives up interviews. Right. We got, yeah, we got him for an hour or something with good conversation. We ain't even dropped it yet. We uh we get ready to get this other dude that just came out that's real big too, uh, Fat Trail. He just got out of prison like two weeks ago. He probably like the biggest rapper come out of DC since Wale. Okay. And you know, he been out he been out two weeks. You can see him online right now with Rick Ross, Meek Mills, the baby, ever he can made it blow up and um supposed to try to get him next week. Uh, you know, we we got some good dudes and we got the mayor of, of, of this city that I'm in, New, uh, Newport News, real accomplished brother. You might see him somewhere in the White House one day, man. He's in his 30s, mm -hmm. youngest mayor ever elected. He's been in the Navy and the, uh, he was in the, no, he was in the Marines and the Army. Um, he's decorated, graduated from Harvard, smart, well-spoken. He just became the youngest mayor in the um, city's history. We interviewed him already, so... It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be something special, man. Okay. So we are. I've just been trying to be busy, man. Trying so you to want that link on there too, for the joint podcast? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, it's called Living Life After Life Podcast. Living life after life. Living life after life. <laughs> podcast. Both of both of us had life. You know what I'm saying? Between the time you you went down and you was going to trial, first off, were you in or were you out when you was going to trial? Oh, well, I was. I was. In, I was in. It was in, okay. So you didn't have no time between when you caught your case, uh, if you to like, damn, let me go ahead and give me some pussy. Let me get thirty years worth of no, pussy no. before I go down. Okay. No, I'll never tell you. No. Once, they, <laughs> once, they, once they, once they, once they, once they put me in the jail, that I, I never saw daylight again for thirty-three years. God damn it! Ooh, yeah. yeah. And then there, there's a num. And what you dealing with in terms of your audience? The reason they're so fascinated with prison is fear. It's fear. Right. They want to yeah, know sure. about something that they scared to experience, right? Yeah. Now you out. Um, excuse me. When you're in the box, you was watching him. Now you out. He watching you. In, yeah, that's in crazy, those man. Yes, it is. Yes, it that's is. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, 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 was, that was, and it blew my mind. And then, like I say, man, we cool. We good friends to this day, man. I actually, like writing my book, the lady just was asking me, writing it. She was just telling me to get 10 to 12 people. That I wanted to write an excerpt in the book, man. He one of the first dudes that came to my mind because, mm -hmm. like I say, that was just a that was just a surreal moment for me, man, to, to actually meet the dude. And then he, he showed me a lot of first. You know what I'm saying? First time I was on a yacht. First time I was in Miami. I ended yeah. up going in the Versace Mansion. Uh, first time I went to a big club and seen. Uh, we went to a uh, club lives, and that night I went in club lives. Lil Dirt and Future was performing. Jamie Foxx was in there. French Montana was in there, and um, and uh, uh, T Pain. So yeah. I experienced all that in one. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was like one crazy. Go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. You know, so I was like, man, this this is this is unreal. From sitting where I sat for so long, and then to be right in the middle of that, that was that was just like crazy for me. Yeah, yeah. You got any? You I mentioned you had a lot of common phrases that you use. You got any of them that you can think of right now? Oh yeah, off the top, I always, like I always say, uh, well, when in prison with these people, they always say uh, they love. I'm telling you what the ones they love. They love. I say when I say use talk in terms of the Bethlehem. See, I'm from D.C. and you know that knife in there in, in prison is that's 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 the gun. That's the everything. Yeah. That's the law in there. So dudes from D.C. we call it the Bethlehem. So. They wanted to know why we call it that. It was like, well, where was Jesus born at? He was born in a manger in Bethlehem. So, you know, if you get hit with this, that's probably you want to be born again. So we always called it that. <laughs> we always called it the Bethlehem. So they loved that. And, you know, I got mercy said, beware of the Bethlehem. You know, uh, I always tell them, you know, I say, you know, little stuff, man. Just Tried to do a quick uh, search of your name. I put Banky Pound into a, a search. 
and I saw yeah, Reddit. Go ahead. Yeah, because I was going to tell you that too when you was, when you was mentioning the uh, stuff at first and you were saying like um, uh, misconceptions or whatever to kill. Mm -hmm. When I first came out and I started doing the dude's show, mm -hmm. when I first down, sat down to do the interview, um, he said, just talk my way where the camera's all up and they said, just tell him, just introduce to yourself, just go ahead, I'll stop you if I have to. So when I first started, I said my name. He stopped me off the top. He said, don't tell him your name, man, because if this thing blow up the way I think it is, he said, you don't have people coming at you and your family, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So he said, what do everybody call you? So I've been called that since I was a kid. Yeah. So, you know, I used the banking pound thing. So people wanted to know who I was so much when it started getting bigger and bigger, they started Googling and trying to figure out who I was from the information of the videos that I first put out. So they got this misconception, a lot of people, because they couldn't figure out who I was. They think I'm this dude, uh, I can't even remember his whole name. It's something like uh, Xavier Murphy or Murphy Xavier or something like that. But I, that ain't me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of people, you might see that on Reddit or whatever, that ain't me. They put that together because they said, oh, well, he was locked up for 33 years. He got out about around this time. Or this, this him. So somebody pointed out to me when you Google, it's going to show up like that's possibly me. It ain't me. Now, as long as he's not, uh, he ain't got a case for pedophilia or any like real nah, weirdo stuff. he got stuff. a case for somewhere in Roanoke, Virginia, which I've never even been to. Him and some other dudes did a home invasion and they, they, they robbed and killed two old people. Okay. That, yeah, that ain't me though. Yeah. Huh? And, and the thing about it is the dude that I first started doing the videos with, he... He got a lot of resources himself. He kind of smart little white dude, but he he, he narcissistic too. But yeah. he kind of smart. But he couldn't even find a picture. We can't even find a picture of this dude. It's like, how can't you find a picture of this dude? Right. Because if they find a picture of the dude, they can clearly see. I done did 600 videos. You know that's not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But they try to squeeze me for me to tell them my real name yeah. by keep saying I'm this dude. And I'm like, well, my name is Banky Pound. That's yeah, you yeah. Mean. You better stick with that, man. Because I, I yeah, tell you. Sure. The, these internet boys, number one, they, they weird as hell, and they got all the time in the world to even do this kind of research. It's like, why, why do you for care? Sure. You know, and then number yeah, two, I know, I know. <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and they and gonna come for you, folks. Just, I just keep it pushing. And then I always just say, I be talking to it myself. I learned, you know, not to get into it with. I just be talking to myself. They can hear me talk to the screen. I always, the least that I would say to them is, I said, just please don't come in here with no negativity, and don't come in here and say nothing that you would not say to my face. That's and that's exactly what they do. That's exactly you know, what they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's one of my that's one of my biggest mottos too. So you can definitely write that one down. That's one that they love the most. I say, feed the positive and starve the negative. Okay. I say, if they coming around you with negativity, just starve them to death, man. They go away. Just stop mm. them. Don't give them no attention whatsoever. You know, and that's one of my biggest ones. All of my fans know about that. And the TVP, man, that's 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 my brand. That's what they they represent, man. All of my followers, they call themselves TVP Nation, man. Team Bank Your Pound Nation. Give me a second. Let me get that. that's an important one. You said TBT. Yeah. TBP Team Bank Your Pound Nation. Any any video like when I did the, the no jumper and I did the flag and I did these other interviews where you see comments, you can see a box of gloves in the comment because that's what they're going to put in there to represent TBP. They either going to write TBP and put the box and gloves or they're just going to put the box and gloves. So that's what that represents. The last thing is this this Reddit piece where it says Banky was arrested 530 for public nudity. Is that you? Nah, that ain't me. Okay, nah, that cool. Ain't me. <laughs> oh shit, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah, they be right. having all types of stuff in there, man. They said that I got it's you might you find something. They say I was locked back up. I went like about three, four, five days without putting out a video. They had on there said I was locked up, man. I was in New York doing a uh interview, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was in Miami or uh, you know, the places I went to do interview, I went to L.A. to do the no-jumper interview. Yeah. So they just be putting all types of crazy stuff out there, man. 